How's it going my bakers? Hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to the channel. Oktoberfest is coming soon, so I thought it's time for another pretzel video. So let's go to the kitchen and check it out. I've made pretzels on this channel before, but that video is so old. Back then, the production quality and the audio were terrible, and my skills were not great either. At least I've fixed the audio and video now. These pretzels are pretty good to be fair. They have a beautifully crunchy crust and a super soft interior and they come with a delicious cheesy dip. That is optional, because these pretzels are great all on their own, or with just a bit of butter. It is up to you how you eat them. Making them is super easy, and even if you've never done it before, after watching this video, you'll be able to. So let's get right to it and see what we need. For the dough, we have some white bread flour, yeast, salt, malt powder, softened butter, and some beer. And you can use any beer you want. I'm using this German white beer, White beer is made of wheat, and I think that's quite appropriate since we're making bread. We are using malt powder to enhance the flavor. There are two types, diastatic and non-diastatic. For the purposes of this recipe, you could use either of them. Pretzels are normally boiled in a solution of boiling water and lye. Lye is an alkaline chemical, but I don't want to deal with it, so instead we're using baking soda. It is readily available and it achieves a similar result. For the cheese dip, have some brie, some cream cheese, softened butter, some crushed caraway seeds, beer, chives, and some smoked paprika. As for the equipment, we'll need a tray with some nonstick paper, a bowl, scales, a dough scraper, a temperature probe, a brush. We'll need a pot for boiling our pretzels, something to fish them out with, and we'll use this metal spatula. And you want a rack for draining them off. And if you are into baking, you should definitely invest in one of these. Right, first things first, let's get this cheese dip out of the way. Combine all the ingredients except the brie. Give them a good mix and then add the brie and mix again. This kind of dip and variations of it are quite commonly eaten with pretzels. It is super cheesy and strong, but it has a very nice creamy texture and a tanginess to it. Caraway is one of my favorite flavors and it works really well here. You could swap out some of the ingredients or change the proportions to your taste. If you don't want it to be super cheesy, you could use more cream cheese and less of the brie. I'll leave those adjustments to you. You make it how you like it. Right, this can go in the fridge, now we can move on to making our dough. As ever, I'm kneading this dough by hand, it's gonna warm up, that's why I'm using cold beer. If you want to learn more about temperature control, check the principles of baking playlist. Right, now grab a large bowl, add the beer, the yeast, the salt and the malt powder, then give it all a good mix. You want to dissolve the salt and hydrate the yeast. Once you don't feel any more salt scraping against the bottom of the bowl, add the butter and the flour, then grab your scraper and mix it to a dough. Mix it in the bowl until there's no more dry flour left. And if the dough scraper doesn't do the job, continue on by hand. Once it's fully mixed, tip it out on the table, and now we can start kneading it. This dough is not sticky at all, so use the regular kneading method. What I like to do is press down and forward with the heel of my right hand, and I use the fingers of my left hand to fold the piece of dough under the heel of my right hand. Then turn it and repeat. It will take no more than 5 minutes. And once it's nice and smooth and cohesive, it's ready. Now we can pop it in a bowl and take its temperature. Around 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit is just about right for this. If your dough is warmer, it will ferment more rapidly. If it's cooler, it will take longer. I'm going to cover this up and leave it to ferment for 45 minutes. After the first 45 minutes of fermentation, we need to give this a fold. Folding will tighten the dough and build tension. It will help your pretzels keep their shape. To perform a fold, place the dough out on the table with the smooth side down. Flatten it and then fold the edge over the middle, going around in a circle until reach point where it started. Then flip it smooth side up again tighten it against the table, and that's the fold done. Pop it back into the bowl, cover it up, and leave it to ferment for another 45 minutes. Now it should really start puffing up. Okay, after bulk fermentation, we can divide this dough. We're making four pretzels, so weigh your dough and divide it into four equal pieces. If you want to make them smaller, you can divide the dough into six. The smaller they are, the crunchier they will be. I prefer a soft pretzel, so this size is perfect for me. But regardless of the number and size, after dividing, we need to pre-shape them. Make sure the trimmings are on top of the dough. Flatten it out, then cross the two sides over in the middle, and then roll it up. You want it to be cylinder shaped. That's because this dough will have to be rolled out quite long. Shaping it like this just gets it on the right track. To prevent the dough from sticking, dust the surface that you're going to rest it on with some flour. Right now these little cylinders are quite tight, so before final shaping, we must cover them up, leave them to rest for around 15 minutes. Without this resting stage, it would be impossible to roll them out long without tearing them. Roll the dough gently and gradually. Try to apply even pressure. And if you feel an air bubble inside it as you roll it out, just slap the dough a few times. 
We don't want to end up with a bubble in the pretzel. You want to roll it quite long and taper the ends. This is around 50 centimeters or 20 inches long. The shorter your dough, the fatter your pretzel. Make of that what you want, I'm just saying. Right, to shape the pretzel, twist the two ends around each other, twice, then fold them over and attach them to the body of the pretzel. Press them down quite firmly so they don't come undone. And that's probably the simplest way of shaping a pretzel. Now you just have to repeat it three more times. Once you're done, place your pretzels on a tray with some nonstick paper. If you don't think they're big enough, just pick them up and gently stretch them out. This will be your last chance to do this. Next up, dust them with some flour, lightly, because we need to cover them up with some cling film and then rest them in the fridge for half an hour. And although this dough is not very sticky, it's better to be safe than sorry. Cooling them in the fridge will slow down the fermentation. It will also harden them slightly, make them easier to handle and boil. And whilst they are chilling, start preheating the oven. 220 degrees Celsius, fan off. And that's 390 degrees Fahrenheit. Make sure your water is boiling too before you take them out of the fridge. Right, let's head over to the stove and boil these bad boys up. The water should be boiling vigorously. Don't forget your baking soda. Once it fizzles out, you can drop in a pretzel. If your pot is wider, you can boil two at a time. But regardless of how many you boil, one minute will do it. After you dropped it in, make sure it's not stuck to the bottom of the pan. My one was, as you can see, I had to release it using my spatula. Also, you can hold them down so they are covered by the water as they're boiling. Alternatively, you can boil them for 30 seconds and then flip them and boil them for 30 more seconds. I prefer doing this because there's less of a chance of distorting the pretzel. Right, 60 seconds are up, we can drain them off. And just a few seconds later, you can place them back on the tray with the nonstick paper. There's just one last thing we need to do before baking. We need to give them a good sprinkling of some crunchy sea salt. To make the salt stick better, take some of the soda water and brush the pretzels with it. This will moisten them enough to make the salt stay put. If you're not into that salty crunch, you can just leave the salt off. And in that case, you don't even need to brush them. Right, let's get these bad boys in the oven. It'll take around 15 minutes. Once they are beautifully golden brown all over, they're ready. As I saw these beauties baking, I thought to myself, damn it, I should have made a double batch. I mean, just look at them. They are beautiful. The channel logo is finally edible. If you do decide to make these pretzels, I would love to see them on my Flickr group. We have a nice little community of bakers there, sharing pictures of their bakes, recipes, ideas, and having discussions. It is totally free, and if you want to join, you can find the link to it below the video or in the pinned comment. So what do you think of my pretzels? Have you ever tried making pretzels before? Do you even like pretzels? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one, click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.